Hi, how you doing? Justin here again. Welcome to IM113, where we're checking out the major scale position one. Now, for those of you that are following on from the beginner's course, this will be your first look at a major scale. And I want to share with you a couple of principles about learning scales before we actually, before I show it to you, um, which are really, really important. And the big one, and it's a really, it's a really, really, really important uh, skill that you should develop, which is when you are learning scales, you do it slowly and accurately. Now the reason for this is that as you're learning a scale, it's kind of like programming a new kind of code. If you think about how complex it is playing a scale, the amount of uh, neurons that have to fire off in your brain to tell exactly what finger where to move where and the pick hand to flick it at just the right time, that's a whole lot of kind of code, if you like, that your brain has to send out to your fingers. Now, if you get it right, from the very beginning and you make sure that your fingers go in the right frets at the right time and you know you, you get it a hundred percent correct when you've finished learning the scale and you've played it through maybe four or five times really slow you can then tell your brain hey do that thing i've just been doing but do it faster please and you won't have any problems it's it, it really works like that if you start making mistakes at the beginning and you play it and you put one finger down and lift it off and put the right finger back on and pick the wrong string and all of this sort of stuff it, it means that it'll take you an awful lot longer to learn the scale. And this is probably the most important thing you could get from this lesson is this technique of doing things really slowly and getting it right at the beginning. Don't pollute your mind with the things that are wrong and just if you get it right from the beginning you have a lot smoother journey all the way. So as I show you this scale I want you to go on the website, have a look at the diagram and do it yourself real slow really slowly even if you know you might feel a bit ridiculous doing it so slowly that's how slow you should be doing it like looking at my diagram and going okay it's the second finger and it's on the third fret the thickest string so the second finger the third fret of the thickest string is that right yeah that's good okay and then play the note then look at the next one and go okay now that's it's the little finger on the same string okay that's that'll be that one there okay let's do let's double check yeah that's it that kind of thing, really slow, for, and, and it might feel a little frustrating, especially for you guys who are teenagers. Now, I never did this, I've got to be honest. When I was learning scales and stuff, I, I used to rush through them all the time, but I also made loads of mistakes, which took years and years and years of practice to kind of get through and start playing them the right way every time. Um, it, the more mistakes you make, the more often those little mistakes kind of sneak in just when you don't want them to. It's, it, it, it really makes a big difference if you can learn it right from the beginning. So. That's, that's really important. Um, second thing I want to mention, make sure that you play with your fingertips. Now, this is one of those things that's, uh, that you need to do at this stage, but later on we might start changing it a little bit because eventually you probably your fingers have more than one task. They're not just playing the note, but they're also probably muting some strings and stuff like that as well. But at this stage, you really want to be playing right with your fingertips, the same kind of part of your fingers that you would have been using for the chords. Right on the ends, make sure your fingers are nice and round all the time. Keep it kind of technically really solid would be an, an, an excellent, excellent idea. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is learning one position at a time. Now, we're just learning now major scale position one. I want to teach you major scale position one, how to use it, how to play it. Be able to make up a little solo with major scale position one before you think about learning any other positions. Now, this is really important. The amount of times that I've met guitar players that can play five positions of the major scale all up and down the neck but can't do even a simple basic solo with any one of them is it's just unbelievable. It happens all the time. And I'm forever meeting people who say the same thing, you know, I know all my scales, but I can never make music from them. I can't play a solo. Don't learn five positions if you can't make music out of one of them, right? So learn this one position and make sure you stick with this one position before you start trying to learn other different positions. Make music out of that position one. It's really possible. You don't have to know lots of positions to make up a good solo. You only need one. Well, you don't even need one, really. You just need a good ear. But you need to be able to use that one properly, right? Really, really important. Um, next really, really important thing is a few of these, sorry, um, is that we're going to start and end on the lowest root note. Now the root note for the scale are the same as chords and with the bar chords where we have one note which determines kind of the note name of the scale. And it's exactly the same with this scale we're about to learn now. We're going to learn G major scale. And we're going to be starting with our second finger in the third fret of the sixth string. And that's the note G, as you hopefully remember from your bar chord playing. And starting on that note G will give us, at the third fret, will give us G major scale. 
If we started with that second finger on the eighth fret, what's the note on the eighth fret of the thicker string? C, well done. Um, if we started with the second finger up on the eighth fret, we'd have C major scale. So in effect, by learning this one major scale, you're in fact learning all of the major scales, one of each, one position of each major scale, which is a pretty cool thing. And this is the idea of using a root note and then just having to move that scale around. Being able to move a scale around the neck is obviously really important to be able to play every scale in every key is kind of the long-term aim. And that's why we make sure that when we're practicing the scales, we always start and end on the lowest root note. Now this is also something I think is really important. A lot of people kind of get off on the wrong foot or get shown by someone not to do it this way. I really think it's important. And the reason for that is that you learn where to move your scale shapes to to create a different scale straight away. You know, if you know the root note is there with the second finger and you want to move it to a D major scale, you know to move it up to the 10th fret. It's, the idea is very simple. And, and you should hold this with every scale that you learn, every new scale, you start and end on the lowest root note. In this case, we're going to be starting on the note G, going up as high as we can, down as low as we can, and then back up and finishing on the note G. So it'll sound like this. Yeah, really important this starting and ending on the lowest root note. You can also hear it. You can hear as well this do re mi fa so thing. Do re mi fa so la ti do, do re mi fa so la ti do. If it doesn't sound like that, hopefully you know this sol fa scale, it's called. Um, if you know the sound of that and your scale doesn't sound like that, you've made a mistake, go and check it right away. So make sure that you leave your ears switched on while you're learning the scale as well. Okay, now that's more than enough talking from me. Sorry for you, those of you that just go like, just get on with it. We're going to get on with it right now. Let's get to a close up and check out G major scale position one. We're starting off here with the second finger in the third fret of the thicker string. Then we're going to add the little finger in the fifth fret. Next string, we're going to have the first finger in the second fret, second finger in the third fret, and little finger in the fifth fret. Next string, we're on the fourth string now, first finger in the second fret, third finger in the fourth fret, little finger in the fifth fret. Next string, we're now on the G string. First finger, second fret. Third finger on the fourth fret. Little finger on the fifth fret. Next string, second finger on the third fret. This is important, remember that on this one string we're starting off here with the second finger. Then little finger on the fifth fret. We're now up to the thinnest string. First finger on the second fret second finger on the third fret, little finger on the fifth fret. Now I would recommend that you practice the scale just going up to start off with. Make sure you can get it right, just going up. Also notice that you've got this little pattern here of two, four, one, two, four. I'm talking about finger numbers of course. Two, four, one, two, four, then one, three, four, one, three, four. Then again, two, four, one, two, four. So if you divide it into kind of three sets, if you like, you've got the two, four, one, two, four, and you've got two, four, one, two, four on the outside groups of two strings with one, three, four, one, three, four in the middle. Let me just play it through for you now, one time all of the way through, and we're gonna be now adding in this note here right at the end. Because as I said, we want to start on the lowest root note, which is the note G, play up as far as we can, back down as far as we can, and finishing on the root note. So one more time, I'm just going to play that nice and slow. Well, 
I hope you're going to take my advice and practice this really slowly and make sure that you get it 100% right. You'll almost certainly find the diagram on the website very helpful for doing this and it's worth definitely looking at it while you're practicing it to make sure that you get it right in the early stages. Now one more thing I need to mention here is the picking. Now when you're learning a scale for the first time, a thing that I recommend is to use all down picks, just to take the idea of picking out of the equation. Just concentrate on playing the scale and do use all down picking, just to get it right. Now ideally, you want to be doing alternate picking for this. So it will be all the way through down, up, 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 down. So when you're starting and finishing that root note, actually the root note on the sixth string and the double octave root note on the thinner string should both be down picks. That's a good kind of little checkpoint to make sure you're going along with that and you're doing it right. If you struggle with your alternate picking, say it out loud as you do it. Count it, you know, say it to yourself. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Just because it's very, very difficult to say one thing and do another. And if, even if you do do it wrong, you'll re recognize that you've made a mistake straight away. So really keep an eye on it. Start with all down picks, learn the scale. As soon as you're cool with the scale and your fingers are kind of know what they're doing and you can think a little bit about something else, i.e. your picking hand, then start to concentrate on that alternate picking down, up, down, up. Okay, now it's just time to put in some practice into this one. Make sure again that you're using your timer for five minutes. So you get five minutes really concentrated, good, solid practice when you're doing this one. Just practicing the scale up and down for now. That's all I want you to work on. We're going to get into using the scale very, very soon. But to start off with, you need to know the scale properly. So just start off with up and down, really concentrate, get it 100% right. And I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.